Hello, today I invite you to a city which is hot in every sense, Naples, where we will meet a stunning girl, clever, beautiful, but most importantly, our compatriot Maria Mujak. Maria Alexandrovna Mujak, born in 1994 in Pavlodar, Republic of Kazakhstan, first appeared on stage at the age of three years. She tried her hand at ballet, pop singing, playing the piano, but soon, on the advice of teachers, it was decided to focus on academic vocals. Being a 10-year-old girl, she moved to Italy with her mother to continue her studies. Already at the age of 14, despite her early age, as an exception, she was enrolled in the Giuseppe Verdi Conservatory in Milan, and four years later, she graduated with honors. Laureate and winner of many prestigious international competitions. She performs in such theaters as the Deutsche Oper Berlin, La Scala Milan, the Royal Muscat Opera House, the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow, the Marinsky Theater, the St. Petersburg Theater, San Carlo Naples Theater, the Opera House in Avignon, Teatro del Maggio, Florence, Teatro Massimo Palermo, Beijing Opera House, Astana Opera, and many others. Ms. Mudra collaborated with such conductors as Carlo Rizzi, Renato Palumbo, Aldo Cicillo, Fabrizio Carminati, Christopher Franklin, Matthew Acoin, and Nicola Batskovsky, as well as such directors as Leo Nucci, Hugo Diana, Perzan Otspetek, Chiara Moody, and Andrea Singhi. Maria's mother remains her long-term mentor and director, along with Maria's leading teachers and vocal trainers. I had planned a meeting with Maria Mujak for a long time. We have been negotiating for more than one year, but somehow we could not coincide in our schedules. Maria is very actively touring the world and finding her in one place is not an easy task. And finally, I get a long-awaited response and invitation to Naples, where in the famous San Carlo Theater, a soprano from Pavlodar will sing nothing less than the main part in La Traviata. So we fly to Naples. Strictly speaking, Milan and La Scala Theatre could be called the headquarters of Maria. But this is not only conditional. Nowadays, an artist can afford to conclude contracts with a variety of theatres around the world. The task is only to catch up with everything. Therefore, it was impossible to make appointment with Maria in Milan where she lives more or less constantly. A few days after our meeting, for example, the singer went to Australia to please the public of Melbourne and Sydney. We met in the south of Italy, with which this beautiful girl has so many connections. The capital of the province of Campania, Naples, met us with almost summer weather and bright sunshine. Here it is not for the first time when here, in the oldest theater in Europe, San Carlo, Maria is playing the part of Violetta, the main character of Verdi's La Traviata. A typical day for an opera artist, guess who is the highlight of the show? Ciao, da Napoli. We started our acquaintance in the Spanish Quarter, the heart of old Naples with narrow streets, noise, and very interesting atmosphere. <music> then she goes for a walk. <laughs> Who came up with such a name? <laughs> Vinci. Oh, it was me. I'm very interested in everything that Leonardo da Vinci did. This way, Leonardo da Vinci. And so I wanted to name him somehow in honor of Leonardo da Vinci. This is my fourth year in Naples. In general, I really love the city for its atmosphere, for people, for its beauty and such a flair. Because the people here are very welcoming. And of course, a delightful theater. Well, the atmosphere in the theater is also very wonderful, friendly, which is important for a good staging, for a good work. 
The San Carlo Theater, which we will certainly visit a little later, is considered the oldest survival opera house in Europe, and singing in such a temple of art is an honor and prestige in itself. And before you got to San Carlo, was this theater included in the wish list of those places where you dreamed of performing? Sure. In general, the San Carlo Naples Theater is considered one of the most prestigious, most beautiful theaters, and of course it is the oldest theater in Europe. And of course, it was always my dream to perform here on the stage and watch all the greatest singers, artists and conductors performed. And when my mother and I came here just as tourists, I looked at the theater and said that I really dream of singing here someday, and I hope that this will come true someday. Then when my first contract came to San Carlo, of course for me it was a great happiness. Were you leaping for joy? I sure was. Back in those days, the decision to study opera in Italy wasn't made by chance. Because what is a better place to master an art if not in the homeland of this art itself? But it wasn't difficult in the beginning to work with Italians. It's such a global brand in opera singing. Wasn't it scary, like, how I would compare with them? I grew up in Italy, therefore I consider myself half Italian already. Therefore, it was okay for me. Here it is the San Carlo, which is being restored now, and right there our Traviata is hanging in the middle. San Carlo was built in such a way that the royal people going to listen to the artists did not even go outside the palace. The theater is connected to the royal chambers by a gallery, and for the general public, there is a front door. Italian audience is very vigorous. They either adore the artist or they can throw rotten tomatoes all over if they don't like something. Does it happen? I thought it only happens in old movies. Well, nobody's going to throw rotten tomatoes, but they would definitely boo at you. What would they do? Boo. They'd be like boo instead of applauses if they didn't like the performance. Come then, let's walk a bit in front of San Carlo. We can cross the road anywhere. Yes, I already noticed. As I can see, Neapolitans are totally okay with the fact that they are being filmed. Absolutely. Even if you look into their house with a camera or phone, they will smile and wave at you. So they don't slam the door in your face. No. As I said, they're very friendly people. So now we go to Piazza del Plebiscito. This is the main square of Naples, although there are a lot of other squares. It is my understanding that it is something of the people. Yes, and this temple here is their cathedral. Basilica. Yeah, Basilica. It is stunning. Maria totally looks like Italian. Moreover, Italian has long become the main language for her. She graduated Italian school, she works in Italy, and mostly she communicates in Italian. Nevertheless, she remains a girl from Kazakhstan, deep in her heart. Sometimes I just miss our expanses of the steps, especially now north of Kazakhstan when you're driving along the road from Nur Sultan to Pavlodar. You constantly see endless steps and the eyes resting at these moments, and sometimes I miss it very much. Here, of course, everything's more compact. Maria quite often performs in her native country. For example, the Astana opera scene is one of her favorite, and listeners, of course, reciprocate her. In general, of course, I really feel the love and support of our people. They write a lot to me on social networks. People write with such warmth from the heart. And you know, this motivates me even more to further achievements. According to the singer, professional growth and daily hard work should not stop for a moment. 
Therefore, she always speaks with warmth and gratitude about her teachers, and that training continues. Moreover, it will always continue until the very end. I'm grateful to God for everything, that everything was in my destiny for every day I lived in my life because all the ups and downs, some failures on the country, they taught me a lot, made me stronger. Many people think differently, but it is like that. If you think about it, then failure really teaches us a lot. We just have to make the right conclusions. Well, and most importantly, we have to believe in what we are doing and love what we do. Probably for me, the most important motivator is the love of people. I have a feeling I'm a special mission on Earth. That is, my voice belongs not only to me. It is a gift from above, which I must give it to people. And so the talent obliges me to work harder. I don't have the right to treat it somehow negligently, to be lazy or to do something wrong. Everything needs to be done in order to develop it and bring joy and good to people. Diva's mother, Olga Mudryak, despite all the persuasions, chose to stay behind the scenes, but it is she who is next to her daughter on all trips every minute. She remains the most severe critic and the most reliable support. The head coach since childhood is your mom? Yes, it's my mom. In general, the main people in my life are my parents. We have such a team. It's not just me alone, Maria Mudryak. This is our group in which we do everything together. We think through everything together. We work together. So your dad is also related to this career? Sure, dad always has our back. And we do everything as a family. And this is my great luck, my great happiness. And the most important people in my life are my parents. They give me everything I have. The long-awaited child in the family, it seems like Maria made all her parents' dreams come true. As early as two years old, I danced in a ballet studio. I drew, I went to the Golden Key Club, and there, in principle, we did all kinds of art, and besides, they taught us mathematics and languages. And somehow it happened that in the beginning my parents brought me to dance studio and I did well there. But at one of the concerts, I saw how little children sang on the stage. They were a little older than me. I told my mom that I want to sing like that on stage too. So you made your choice. Yes, and my mother took me to a vocal studio and they listened to me there and they said, that girl has a voice. And so we started. And at the age of three, I already sang at my first concert. Do you remember the first applause? What was it like to perceive? I always loved being on stage. I always loved the audience. And from childhood, I remember that I liked to look in the hall. I'm not the artist who sings for himself or somehow just admires what he does. Contact with the public is very important to me. Therefore, it's even easier for me to sing when there are more people, when I see many faces, many emotions, and then it seems to me that I start to sing even better. When at the family council, on the advice of teachers, it was decided to start learning opera vocals. It was followed by the decision to go to Italy. This step at first was not easy for the family, but over time everything worked out and now this country has become a warm, cozy and welcoming home for our friend. Once we drove to Naples by car and we ended up in the Spanish Quarter and there is a very dense building and someone put a motorcycle next to my car and I could not turn around, that is, I had to backpedal. And the Neapolitans, good-natured people, they saw that the girl at the wheel was 
in a difficult situation, and it seems to me that a similar situation would be difficult even for a very experienced driver. They just looked out from all the windows, and in turn, everyone who saw my car, everyone began to say like, give it a go, or now a little back, with their very emotional manner, in general, they helped me. What do you advise me? Not that I said here. <laughs> and so they help in different situations, that is, even in stalls, in stores, they always advise, in general, they help people very much. They try to help. Such patients on the balconies, what is this for? Patients, in order to pick up what they don't want to carry in their hands on their stairs or on the elevator, for example, some products or something like that, even from the fifth or sixth floor, and they lower different packages or things in a basin on a rope. Luigi, give me two kilograms of tomato. Yes, something like that. And here is the cherished evening. We are in the Holy of Holies in Maria's makeup room. In general, I try to make up myself, but if there are good makeup artists, my friends whom I have known for several years, then of course I trust them. In the case of San Carlo, I trust these makeup artists and hairdressers. Are there any other secrets, for example, when you need a special meal or some mood before the performance? This is all very individual. Personally, I always try to always eat tightly so that there is energy, so that I have the strength to sing. And of course, there are such restrictions. For example, for me personally, it's avoiding cold beverages, spicy or fried food before the show. The excitement is felt by all artists, even if it's not the first time or even the first year you've played this role. The magic of the stage, the magic of the auditorium, it all works. I don't know, it seems to me that every appearance on the stage is all the same excitement, adrenaline, and it seems to me when you go through the scenes and enter the stage, then everything changes because before that, there's still excitement. There's no way to get rid of it. I must say that in order to get to San Carlo, we barely managed to buy the last two tickets. Mezzanine and six floors of lodges sold out completely, and I'm very glad that we managed to join this holiday. Do you have a favorite role, favorite costume? <laughs> this role, the role of Violetta in La Traviata. This is probably my most frequently performed role in the opera, but in principle, it seems to me that it is generally one of the most beloved among the public, and it is very complex emotionally and musically. And, of course, there is a lot of beautiful music written by the great Verdi, and it is so popular. It contains so many famous works that people know by heart, that is, the audience very often sings along. The same Brindisi, the drinking song, Radio Cara, the final duet. And, of course, Violetta. And the productions, they are all different. I love every one of them very much in order to sing them well. I still always remember the pleasure received from the evening in the opera San Carlo. A stunning theater, an elegant audience, magnificent artists and the awareness that the main character is not just a world-class star, but our Maria Mudriak. It's hard to describe all these emotions. The audience applauded standing up. The screams of bravo sounded again and again, and here you can only regret one thing. One cannot often experience such a celebration of the soul. At the moment, Maria Mudrak has performed in more than 25 countries, and very interesting memories are associated with some trips. For example, in New York, she happened to perform under the open sky right in Central Park. I sang in the Central Park, and there is a big scene with this shell, and people came. 
That is, this concert was organized by the Italian government. There were a lot of important guests from the Italian and American governments, and of course, ordinary people. People came, brought rugs, someone brought folding chairs with them, and they listened to our whole concert with an orchestra. It was all very cool. Our impressions of New York coincide. I always want to return to the city, and the performance in the open air was not as extreme as sometimes. The weather was favorable, and there were no difficulties. But it was completely different in St. Petersburg. Probably the most climatically difficult performance was in St. Petersburg, classic on the Palace Square. We performed at Palace Square for the birthday of St. Petersburg. And unfortunately, the weather was just very, very cold and rainy. But despite this weather, the square was full of people. Petersburgers came to our concert. Everyone had two or three umbrellas in their hands. There were people in raincoats with children, elderly people. The scene was just wet. Bell Rons could not dance. The orchestra, that is, all the instruments, got wet in the beginning. The musicians refused to play because it is simply unacceptable for the orchestra to play underwater. And there, even the canopy did not help. That is, the wind still blew rain in onto the stage. And yet, the artists took to the stage because the square was full of people. There were a lot of spectators. And when I got there, my performance was among the first ones. I was in a dress. Just an ordinary concert evening dress. You should have seen me being taken out of the dressing room behind the curtains. They brought me changeable shoes, but put on me several rugs just to get to the stage. Then, when before going on stage, I took off all these rugs. I went on stage and it was as if they simply poured a bucket of cold water on me, because between the curtain and the stage, water was flowing. And I'm all wet. I go on stage, I open my mouth and my breath misting. It was so cold there. And in such conditions, we performed. But overall, it's okay because we were warmed by the energy of people who just came to the concert, stood for almost two hours there in the square. They encouraged us to perform well. That day was remembered for a long time by both the spectator and the artists. Musicians feared for the safety of instruments sensitive to moisture and cold. Opera artists risked their voices, and yet the holiday was a success. Sure, when you are on stage, you are like in some other dimension at that moment. In general, to keep the voice and ligaments in perfect condition is a daily work that requires attention to details and daily decision-making to treat or not to treat, take medications or get along, go out into the cold air or stay in a warm room. Every little thing matters when you work tool is your voice. I realized that I should not take any medications, no antibiotics, nothing at all, because everything affects the voice. That is, today you will sing well, but in a week you will feel bad. But you need to constantly sing. You can't sing once every six months. That is, there are consequences everywhere, so you should generally try not to use anything. Marie is only 25, and no matter which way you look at it, you have to think about how her bel canto will sound at 40. It is noteworthy that the soprano is usually formed quite late, much later than 20 years. Thus, given that Mujak's career began phenomenally early at 14, she already sang the lead of the party. Attention to the voice should be intensified. <laughs> Nodules, polyps can appear on tired ligaments, that is, sometimes it cannot even do without surgical intervention. And this in no case should be allowed because rehabilitation after such an operation lasts at least a year. And so a special technique is being studied so that the voice and body always remain in good condition. Because, let's say even yesterday I sang, and in fact my condition left much to be desired, but in such cases it's technique that comes to the rescue and helps out. That is, thanks to the technique, a singer 
can sing until old age, when many people with bad technique cannot sing at the age of 40, because they already worn out their voice. In addition, Maria's voice is still undergone age-related changes, which means that the repertoire that suits her best is gradually changing. It is possible that in a couple of years, Maria Mudriak will play other parts. Unexpected subtleties of the profession are also revealed. For example, could I suggest that opera singers often injure their knees? And you know, at rehearsals, the constant falls on knee. I always have big bruises. Who would think that an opera singer would face such difficulties? We have many problems with the knees. Many may need surgery. Rehearsals periods are quite difficult physically because you have to move a lot, run, repeat several times. Well, of course, it depends on the setting from the role, but there are also such difficulties. You come home all bruised. Your hands are bruised, your legs are all bruised, your knees too. When we played Figaro's Wedding, the director Chiara Muti told me that I was supposed to be in the drawers of the 1700s. They are very short, and I have all my legs bruised. She says, what will we do? We'll cover everything, and my legs were covered with foundation because I had terrible bruises. There were shootings, but it was impossible to go on shoots like that. According to preparations, which opera was the most difficult? Do you mean according to rehearsals? Intensivity? Well, it probably depends on the production. For example, La Traviata had rather complicated productions. Bohemia is quite static, but Figaro's Wedding was a very bright, beautiful setting of 1,700 years. The costumes were detailed down to handkerchiefs. Everything was thought out. But La Traviata is still a favorite one. La Traviata and Bohemia, I really like the role of Mimi too. Puccini music, Verismo. Puccini's Verismo is a slightly different planet compared to Verdi. There is more passion. If Verdi's passion is more restrained, then Puccini has all the emotions out. That's why I also love him very much, and I think in the future I will play other roles. Don't you want to capture your singing in order to keep in memory the way you sing now? Maybe you should release a disc. So this year, one of the most important events in my life will happen more precisely next year, but uh, the preparation has already begun. This is preparation for recording my first solo album. We will finally record my solo album, that is, there will be all the most famous opera hits, and finally, it is happening. That is, the preparatory process is already underway. Preparatory process, and somewhere in January, we will already record. Great. At one of the world's top studios. Yes. I still can't name the orchestra and the conductor, but it will also be all at the highest level. Fantastic. In general, what are you dreaming of? Maybe there is some kind of such a big dream. There are almost no unconquered stages left, right? No, there are still stages that I would like to perform on, but of course the most important goal is to sing for people, to sing in the best theaters in the world and just to please everyone with my voice. And of course, the most important thing is that my parents stay with me as long as possible so that we are all together. You know, when you grow up, you begin to understand it more and more, the value and importance of the closest people that are present in your life. Whatever happens all the same, they come first, always. We concluded our conversation on such a warm spiritual note, promising each other that we would certainly continue our acquaintance. On October the 17th, Maria Mudrak became the owner of a very prestigious prize in the world of opera, El Canto, causing a flurry of emotions again getting such a high status at 25 is a rarity. And we all, of course, are waiting for Signorina Mudrak with a tour in her homeland, and of course, we're happy for her successes. Am I right?
And I sincerely thank Maria and Olga Mudrak for the warm welcome and truly our responsiveness. After all, our people are able to find their place under the sun in any corner of the world, but at the same time remain ours. See you again.